Hi, it's Kelly here, and in this video I'm going to uh, share with you how I pray regarding hurricanes. And I want you to have this skill as well. Um, it's very, very easy to do, um, but there are certain particular ways of doing it that might be different than the way that you've done it in the past. So please uh, hang in there with me, and, and at the end, if I get caught up, before the end, if I get caught up in the description, and saying different things in the end, I'll give a quick summary of the, of the process as well. Um, but you want to hear the first part of it because unless you hear the first part, the second part won't necessarily make a lot of sense and it won't work. And I want to share this with you as well. This will be f totally focused on, on how to uh, pray regarding hurricanes this video will not talk about other subjects uh, that bring in negativity. Um, and if someone, if you feel like a need to tell me why we have the hurricane, or and even try to slip it in slyly, I'm going to delete it because I want the focus on this to be strictly on this technique. So thank you for for uh, going with me on that. Um, and so here here's how it works. First thing we're going to do is we're going to use the question in this book, uh, is there a question that heals instantly? Because what we want to do is to get into, to remove anything that's bothering us at the moment and get us into loving kindness. And oh, before I even get into that, what I want to say is, is that hurricanes are actually a real simple process. I want to explain that to you first, so that uh, when we do that, when I explain that the process, you'll be able to move right into it. Hurricanes are, s are very, very, very simple. They are ion sandwiches, multi-layered ion sandwiches. Normally, you would have a, a negative ion and a positive ion, negative ion, positive ion, all going left to right or right to left, like that. That's just the way they they work, because they would repel each other if they weren't. The things that have the ident you know, the same charge, so whether it be negatives or positives, in the case of hurricanes, are jammed together. And then on top of that is another jamming together of negative ions and then positive ions and negative ions and positive ions. And this jamming together of these ions that's res that are resisting create tremendous uh, turbulence particularly when you're talking about something that's miles, you know, tens of miles wide or a hundred miles wide. And, and there's a lot of them, you know, a hundred miles thick. So it, that's all there is to it. So because it's so simply put together, taking it apart is also extraordinarily simple. Because all you have to do is introduce some extra negative ions in there to disrupt the positive ions, and phew, and it goes, and so so it's real simple. I, I just it's real important we can wrap our head around that that this exercise is not something that's beyond the pale. It's beyond something that we can do because we're we're taking something that's very simple, and we're introducing something simple, and that takes care of it. It is not a complex thing. You don't have to furrow your brow like I tend to do, or any of that stuff. It's just, and we're not even going to be, we're not even really going to be thinking about too much about the hurricane when we do this, all right? So, so we know that part, and we also know that in the Bible, when uh, when Jesus was out, was out with his apostles on the boat at one point, it was the Sea of Galilee, and there was a storm, and they were terrified because it's a big enough sea, I guess, that, that uh, you know, you could, you could drown. So they got afraid, and Jesus calmed the waters, just like that. And we say, well, Jesus did that, but can I do that? When, and, and Jesus told us we could. He said, I believe it was at the Last Supper, where he said, you will do these things, you can do these things, or you will do these things, and you will do greater things. And Hurricane Helene, for example, is uh, a greater thing. And Milton, is it, for example, is a, is a greater thing. 
I saw that it's supposed to be 165 miles an hour in the next 12 hours. Now, the thing about Milton is that it's supposed to slow down when it gets to shore. However, the winds that, the, that are there now and the 165 mile an hour winds that create waves. And these waves continue until they hit land. So even though the hurricane will be slowing down as far as that speed, what we need to slow down is the storm surge, which at 165 miles an hour, and it could go higher, you know, before all said and done, because it's over warm, warm water. And uh, so we need to, well, well, so that's what's happening. And that, those waves will just come in over a very wide area, you know, above Tampa Bay, down in Naples, millions and millions of people there. I just saw a headline that six million people are being told to leave out of the state of 15 million people. That's a lot of people. And the thing about water destruction or st storm surge, you know, if you have a wind thing and, uh, and it knocks down your, your clothesline or, or your, you know, tears a shingle off your roof, you can just patch it up, everything's fine. But when it's water, within days, you, you, get, you get mold. And with the vastness of this area and with the vast storms gone, you know, with Helene before it, that this is going to be impossible for people to recover. They're going to have to tear down all the buildings and, and start from scratch because the mold's going to be there a long time for most of those places. Oh, and by the way, just like Helene, Helene got several inches of rain for a couple days prior to the hurricane sitting over top of them. Uh, this one, it has been raining since yesterday. I talked to my brother in Fort Myers. It's been raining since yesterday and it's expected to rain right up until the hurricane hits. So the ground is being once again saturated by lots of water. So this storm, whatever level of water it brings, it'll be that much higher because none of it can get absorbed into the ground because it'll be saturated already. So now we've got all that that preliminary out of the way, let's let's move to it. So, the question in this book, and we'll, we'll, we'll do it a couple of times, is there a question that heals instantly, is as follows. Why do I love discovering what's between me and loving kindness? Why do I, and let's, let me just say it a second time, why do I love discovering what's between me and loving kindness. You might have noticed that I emphasized discovering the first time and love the second time. So we'll do, let's do this out loud if, if you can. If you can't do it out loud, that's fine, but let's go ahead if you can. Let's do it out loud two times. <clears throat> and what this will do is will help get us from any negativity that we're focusing on into a place of neutrality and into gratitude because love is gratitude work. So here we go again. Why do I love discovering what's between me and loving kindness? Why do I love discovering what's between me and loving kindness? Now, now that we're in that frame of mind, and you, and you might end up saying to yourself again after I explain the next step, is that you're going to bring into your, into your memory <coughs> the, the most joyous time in your life. For me, I can think of two occasions in particular. One was holding my baby sister for the first time when I was about five or six years old. And the next time was when I held my son for the first time. And it was just really powerful. So go ahead and take a moment to recall that. You may, if, may recall something else. One lady told me that being in the front row uh, of a Bruce Springsteen concert was like the highest point of good memories in her life. So whatever it is, you just bring that present, that that feeling. So because what we're going to do is we're going to drop the recollection of what of what the event was, because that's not important at all. It has zero importance. What's important is the feeling. And you can put your hand lightly on your heart and just feel that feeling in your heart. So it's a present moment. You've just brought it forward. Right? So in that place, we are going to talk to God. And we're, what we're going to do is we're going to 
it was going to love God from this loving in our heart that we have, and we're going to thank God for the loving. And then we can praise God that he has given us all of this, that this ability to move into loving and to move into gratitude. And if anything pops up that's, you know, gets in your way, we'll also be grateful for the forgiveness that God gives us. And I just ask God to forgive us in this moment for our past transgressions. So that, that's, just, that's how easy this is. And so we're going to think of the water and see, we, we don't have to know how God does this in, in the particulars, how he's going to change the, the waves, make, move them in different directions perhaps, flatten them out. We don't know. And we don't have to know any more than we have to understand electricity in order to turn the light on in our house. God knows how to do this. He will take care of it. You will just enjoy the experience of getting in touch with him. And by the way, you will be using this tool not just for Milton. You're going to be using this tool from now on going forward. You can use it, practice it over and over again to, to the point where you get to where you are unceasingly praying to God. That's how you do it. That's how you pray unceasingly to God. It sounds like a difficult challenge, but when you move into that loving moment, and not the memory, but the feeling. And then you love God for it, and you thank God for it. You move yourself into the land of miracles, and wonderful things happen. And you'll get to practice this over and over and over again. And don't worry about if you get it right the first time or the second time. Each time you do it, you probably find something else unfolding. So it's a beautiful thing. And it can work instantly regardless of how bad your present situation is. There's no prerequisites for this working for you. And that's all the great thing, because it's God, and that's why God works. God works instantly. He does, or she does, or whatever God is, works for us. So let's do this once again and, and, and say to ourselves, why do I love discovering what's between me and loving kindness? Why do I love discovering what's between me and loving kindness? Now bring that loving kindness for that moment into you, right now, into the present moment. And start thanking God. And you can close your eyes if you'd like, so that you can have that inner focus. You don't need to look at me. Uh, you just go into the inside of you. And you'll find that there's a coherence that goes on in you. You'll find that you, uh, right here, you can open your eyes for a moment. Right here, your pineal gland will also activate. Because when you do this, you'll be creating negative ions. It's, it's not, that's how simple it is if, it, if this works. So you've got that feeling of love for God. And you might see, you might see the, the Gulf of Mexico and, and just how beautiful it is. And you just love it, and you, and, you have, and you thank God for it. And that water is, is moving and doing what it does. And it's helping to cool off the waters, which is a great thing. And it is just doing, it's blessing everything it comes in contact with. And we are just so, so grateful for it. And, and that's all there is to it. And you can do this for five minutes, you can do this for an hour, you can do it for as long as you want, you can do it repeatedly. You don't have to wait for the storm to get closer to to Florida because we want, we're practicing this exercise and when two or more of us are gathered together doing this, God is there with us also. So let's do this, let's bring this joy into our heart. The, joy, the living waters of God taking care of the Gulf of Mexico and blessing us all and blessing the people of Florida and anywhere else. And, uh, and there's a saying, I think it's Sanskrit, it's Barush Bishan, and it means the blessings already are. 
And that's what we can see, we can feel. And this is all there is to it. It happens. Ions work instantly. There's no, there's no, you know, you don't have to cook it for 35 minutes to make an ion work. When you hit those, those spots, those beauty spots in your heart and in your mind, of visualizing the water being beautiful and that you love God for it, it takes care of itself. All right, so that's the process, and let me just run through it one more time as a summary. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the question in this book, uh, is there a question that heals instantly? And that is, why do I love discovering what's between me and loving kindness? And we'll ask that twice, focusing the first time on the word discovering, and the second time on the word love. And then we're going to recall something joyous in our life, and, we're going, and then we're going to drop the circumstances of that and just move it into our heart with our hand gently on our heart, if we'd like. We can close our eyes during this if we wish. And when we get that feeling, that present feeling in our heart of what that felt like, and it feels like that now, you can then thank God for it, you can love God for it, you can praise God for it. You can praise God for the Gulf of Mexico and how beautiful the water is and, and how it sustains us and supports us and how calm the water is. And, and, uh, and just go with that. And, and go with that in your heart. And you can forgive yourself if anything comes up in the meantime because you're so grateful that God is willing to forgive you. And this all works instantly. So you take care and God bless.